How are you? Good. Good. You're welcome. Um, can I please take that, that thing if that's okay? Absolutely. Do you have a good weekend? Yeah. Oh, I tell you. That's okay. Yeah. Do you mind if I put it on your tray and this you part. just try it? Thank you. Don't forget your apple. Thank you. Oh, there's fish today. Are you going to get that? Hi, girls. We're trying red fish tacos today, and I think you'll really like them. Red fish? I'll try it if you guys try it. We also have clam chowder and kelp salad. Ooh, I like clam chowder. What's kelp salad? Kelp is a sea vegetable, and the salad is like coleslaw. Okay. I'll try it. Do you want the clam chowder, too? Yes, please. You got the fish? Mmm, this is really good. So how do you like your tacos? Really good. Where'd you get this from? The tacos are handmade, but the redfish comes from North Coast Seafood. Where's that? I think it's out of Boston. Would you like to learn more about where your lunches come from? Yeah! Hey guys, I'm Andrew Wilkinson from North Coast Seafoods. Welcome. We are a seafood processor. This is where you get your fish from your cafeteria. What does it mean to be a seafood processor? In a nutshell, when that seafood, the fish comes in from the boats on the pier, it all comes over to here so we can make it ready to eat for you. What does that entail? Taking the scales off, filleting that fish, and then taking the skin off, making sure all the bones are out of it, and that's how we process the fish. We're actually in the North Coast Seafoods Test Kitchen. This is where my background as a chef I'll take the Acadian redfish, and this is where I make all the tests to make it taste great. Why do we use the Acadian redfish? One, because it's caught right here in the Gulf of Maine. It's an abundant species. It's a perfect size for a fish fillet for a school cafeteria, and it tastes great. It has a nice sweet flavor, and it comes with a certification from the Gulf of Maine Research Institute that says it's responsibly harvested and sustainable. Fish come with many different certifications. Wild fish around the world, if they're sustainably harvested, come with a certification of Marine Stewardship Council Certified, or MSC. If it's aquaculture, it'll be labeled with BAP, which means Best Aquaculture Practices. These certifications help companies show compliance with regulatory requirements, and most importantly, quality standards, and that the products they are selling have been sustainably harvested. Certifications can help you or your school decide what fish or shellfish to buy. We here at North Coast Seafood, we developed a plan for school kids. It's called Real Food for Healthier Kids. Seafood is brain food. It not only helps your brain be a better thinker, but it helps your body be a stronger, healthier person as well. We take it to the next level and make it taste great. We put two awesome coatings on from the fish and chips or the coconut crusted. The process here, what we're doing is we take the fish. This is for a baked item. So we have a pre-dust of flour, a little seasoned flour. It goes through a canola oil. It goes across, gets rid of any excess oil. And then it goes into our mixture of ground up, low fat Cape Cod kettle chips bound with a little bit of panko crumb. And I say it all the time, and some people just don't get it, or some people do. I mean, this is wild fish that was caught, you know? There's nothing done to it. After we get a case that's 15 pounds or thereabouts, goes in, we have the code in, it gets all wrapped up. And that's our fish in chips. GMRI, that's the Gulf of Maine Research Institute. That denotes that it's a responsibly harvested fish. This is the Acadian redfish, 15 pound case, and fish in chips. Hey, I want you to meet Tori Bramante, a friend of ours. He's not just a friend, he's a fisherman, and he works out at the Boston Fish Pier. He's the guy who's responsible for bringing us all of our Acadian redfish and stuff from the Gulf of Maine. Hey, Tori, some students want to meet you. Tori. All right, guys, we're all done doing the ice. We can take the hose off the boat now. Okay. Looks good. Okay. 
Hey, Andrew. Hi, guys. My name's Tori Gramonti. I'm the owner and operator of Atlantic Coast Seafood. This is where uh, Andrew uh, gets his supply of fish from, and this is a vessel. Here at Atlantic Coast Seafood in Boston, we coordinate the boats, the 17 boats that fish for us with North Coast Seafood to make sure they have an even and constant supply of seafood coming to them when they need it. We fish all year long to make sure that we have the product for North Coast Seafood. Some of the trips are day boats, some of them are trip boats. My job is to make sure that the quality that comes off of these vessels is what North Coast Seafood wants. Our boats here target haddock, cod, pollock, redfish, flounders and monkfish. Our redfish today is serving you for lunch. I'm a fisherman and a parent too, and I'm proud to be serving you guys fresh seafood in your cafeterias. Wow, our lunch was made right there. Can you tell us more about the fisherman who caught the fish? I'll do better than that. Let me introduce you to a fisherman that I know. Hi kids. Did you catch our lunch? I might have caught your lunch. After I land the fish, most of it goes to auction. And then it could end up in any big city in the U.S. or the other side of the world. These local markets can make it easier for us to make a living and let more fish stay in the ocean. It's not always easy because imported fish can be a lot cheaper. But the problem is we don't always know how that fish was caught or whether it was caught by fishermen who fish under the same rules and regulations that are friendly to an environment. Plus, we love meeting and knowing the people who eat the fish we catch, like you guys. The redfish you're having for lunch today is abundant in the Gulf of Maine. There are strict rules about how much of different kinds of fish I can catch. We want more people to know about redfish because there's a really healthy population of it. Eating redfish and other less known species like pollock and dogfish can help us make sure there are lots of fish available for years to come and families like mine can keep fishing. Fish is really healthy to eat, too. What are the rules and regulations you're talking about? Well, rules are meant to manage fisheries. These days, fisheries are managed by rules guided by the Magnuson-Stevens Fisheries Conservation and Management Act. This is a complicated act, but it basically says that we'll manage our fisheries to conserve fish but also to allow fishermen to continue doing what you've been doing for centuries. This act requires that all decisions be based on the best available science. But it's not an easy thing to do, and what we have is not perfect. It's not easy to count fish in the ocean or come up with plans that work for both fish and fishermen. Our management system is one of the most advanced in the world. That's not to say it's perfect. We need the help of a lot of people to keep improving how we manage fish. We need smart scientists, managers, and fishermen all listening to each other to make things work as well as possible. And yes, we have our disagreements, but there's one thing I know and that we all can agree on. We don't want to catch and eat the last fish. My fellow fishermen and I see ourselves as responsible stewards of the marine resources like fish and we know we can have a future with both fishermen and fish. Maybe one of you can help us down the road. What do you think? Has there always been rules and regulations in place? No. Fishing in the Gulf of Maine has a long history. The historical use of the Gulf of Maine is linked with fishing and the abundance of ground fish. Those are fish that swim close to the bottom of the ocean that were seen in the Gulf. The ability to harvest cod, haddock, and hake is what allowed so many Europeans to settle in New England, survive, and be profitable. So fishing has always been a part of our history. In fact, it was the original industry in the New World. Long before Europeans arrived, Native Americans were the first fishermen before it was even called America. It was a central part of the diet and economy of coastal tribes like the Abenakis, Penobscot, and Wampanoag and then came the Europeans. The Vikings and the Basques were some of the first to travel back and forth between the Gulf of Maine and Europe with the cod they caught. Eventually, Columbus discovered America, and then the pilgrims settled in New England in the early 1600s. Cod, from the beginning of European settlement, was a very sought-after commodity because it was so easy to catch, could be preserved with salt, and it provided great nutrients for many people. Cod was shipped 
all around the world. New technology, though, has led to a significant increase in the amount of fish being caught. Boats from all over the world also continue to fish here. This exploitation led to the rules and regulations being implemented in the 1970s to discourage overfishing, restrict who could fish here, and encourage sustainable fishing practices. Today, as a fisherman, I have to follow these rules and regulations. It was nice talking to you, but I need to get ready for another day on the water. Enjoy your lunch. But the fishermen didn't catch the clams in our chowder or the kelp in our salad. Where did those come from? Kelp and clams are not caught like fish. They're from farms. Have you guys ever heard of aquaculture before? No, what's that? Let's look it up. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Chambers. I'm an aquaculture specialist at the University of New Hampshire, New Hampshire Sea Grant, and New Hampshire Cooperative Extension. You want to learn about aquaculture? Well, aquaculture is essentially farming or growing a product in water or the ocean. Um, it could be a shellfish, it could be a plant, it could be marine fresh, it could be an ornamental fish. Um, today I heard you're eating clam chowder. It sounds delicious. Shellfish are very healthy for you. They're full of omega-3 fatty acids that they pull from the water column when they eat phytoplankton and zooplankton. So I can't say enough about eating mussels, oysters, or clams if you have the opportunity. In addition to the shellfish being very healthy for you, they actually provide what's called ecosystem services. When they're in the ocean, they're filtering the water, they take out turbidity, they take out extra nutrients that come in from the land, so they actually clean up the environment that we live and swim in. Americans love to eat seafood. Unfortunately, a lot of that seafood is hard to come by now from the wild. A lot of our seafood actually is imported in from foreign countries. So there's a lot of interest here to grow aquacultured products in the ocean and in even the lakes. There are benefits to this, obviously. Seafood, number one, is really good for us, but we can grow a lot more seafood in a per square area than you can on land. They're very efficient converters of food to flesh. Right now, we've been training fishermen here as a way to diversify their backgrounds on aquaculture in case the fishing is not as good as what it is today. This is something that they could fall back on and perhaps do in the future. Right now, in New Hampshire, we're actually growing blue mussels, oysters, sugar kelp, and steelhead trout just offshore. Have you tried the sugar kelp yet? It's actually really healthy for you. We grow it here offshore. It can grow from one inch to seven feet in about six months' time. They call it the super kale of the sea. It's rich in vitamin B12, iodine, magnesium, calcium. It's got things in it that you can't find on land. So if you have the opportunity to try it, eat it. It's delicious. It comes in dried formats. It comes in kelp noodles. You can make kelp potato chips out of it as well too, which are really fun to eat. Oysters are grown on the bottom, but clams are also grown on the bottom. They're actually grown in the mud. And so further south of here, where the waters are warmer, you'll see giant clam flats where people put out seed and grow them and then bring them to your markets as you see on your plate today. So enjoy your clam chowder and your sugar kelp. Remember, they're really healthy for you to eat. If they're available to you at your cafeteria, take advantage of them and eat them. You won't be sorry that you did so. Have fun. Wow, we learned a lot about our lunch today, and it's good for us. I didn't realize there's such a long history of fishing around here. I like meeting the fishermen. I want to keep supporting him and the local fishermen by eating redfish and the other species there are a lot of in the Gulf of Maine. I'm going to try the fish next time. <laughs>